So let's talk about how to evaluate a job offer. Um, I have a friend of mine that's going through a situation where she took a job and and is finding out now that she has the job that maybe it wasn't exactly as expected. Maybe some of the compensation elements aren't exactly uh, what she expected. And so I wanted to take a minute and just kind of talk about this a little bit because I think that so often job offers come to us and they're, they have writing all over them that tells us they're confidential, we shouldn't discuss this with anyone, et cetera, et cetera, that, that I don't think people really dig into this much and really talk much about what constitutes a, a good, solid job offer that lets you make a smart decision about whether or not to accept the position. So I'll, I'll start with a couple of things and just kind of go through them. Um, I'll start with one, which is just a really solid description of the job and the role, not just a title. Um, and this is kind of important, especially in this day and age where you'll, you'll interview for a job and then you'll take the job only to find out that the job has radically changed between the time when you extend an offer and the time you start. And so having some semblance of what your roles and responsibilities are, what your job is in the offer is extremely helpful. Second, I don't expect details on career paths and those sorts of things, but I want to understand some things about my role. Is there a promotability? So in other words, is it, a, is it a job family where there's career growth? That's all I'm looking for. Hey, you'll be um, a consultant one in the consultant family, and we have seven positions of consultants, so there's a career path here. I just want some semblance of understanding that those sorts of things are available. I will take that, by the way, uh, as, a, as a conversation. I don't necessarily need it codified in the job offer, but I do want to understand that. And, and a way to think about this is a lot of companies have what we call managed roles and unmanaged roles. Managed roles typically have formal career paths, formal criteria for promotion, all these other sorts of things. Unmanaged roles, less so. So one of the things I'm really looking for am, am, is am I in a managed role that has clearly defined steps for promotion, for growth, these sorts of things, or I'm in an unmanaged role where there's really no criteria and it's really up to me to negotiate that. I might not turn down a job for being in an unmanaged role, but, but I'm going to go into that job with, with my eyes open about it because I kind of want to understand um, what potentially could happen long term. So those are the, the big things I'm looking for just in terms of like having a good, solid understanding of the role I'm being hired for so that there's some accountability to the fact that I was hired to do something specific and that's the job I actually got on hire. Now, next thing I'm going to be looking at are some of the compensation elements. And look, the biggest red flag for me is this. If someone says, well, we'll work out some of the details of compensation on hire, um, that's just a no. Just flat out write a no for me. I will not take a job, period, without a clear understanding of how I'm, I'm compensated. I want to know if I'm hourly, what my hourly rate is. Uh, if I'm salaried, I don't know what my salary is. I want to know what the minimum is I'm going to make at that job. Uh, per month, per week, whatever your increment is, so I can understand if I can pay my bills and those sorts of things. That's that's pretty important to everybody. Um, I want to understand my upside. So if I'm on a commission gig, I want to understand the commission schedule. I want that in writing. Boy, for sellers, for people who work on commission, that must be in writing because it's too easy for companies to change that after the fact. So make sure you get commission schedules, those sorts of things in writing. Bonus schedules I want to understand. I want to understand minimum, maximum. Is there a chance that I could get no bonus? Is there a chance that I could get a negative? You know, if you underperform, you have to give back something. I want to understand all of those elements involved with bonus, stock, anything else that I get as part of my total compensation package, I want to understand and I want it to be spelled out fairly explicitly. Um, now, some companies will link you to a website that has that. I can print that out. That's okay with me, but I want to make sure it's clear in there. The other thing I look for are things where maybe there are some expenses I'm not going to have anymore. So, for example, lots of companies might compensate you for your internet access or your mobile access or something like that. So I want to understand sort of what sorts of things I don't have to pay if I work for this organization. And then finally, I really want to understand the cost of benefits. And, and I'll stress that this can vary pretty broadly. So, for example, if I'm a single guy and I get a job and I have the same exact comp as someone who is a married person with three kids, um, while salary and everything else is going to be exactly the same, the out-of-pocket cost for benefits for the person with three kids is going to be a lot higher. They're actually making less money than me as a single person because their costs for benefits are much, much higher. So I really want to understand how those all lay in so I can make a good, solid decision around whether or not the financials of this opportunity meet my needs, right? So, so again, solid job description, solid understanding, solid understanding of compensation, work time, work start. I want to know if there's any sort of probatory period. Hey, we're, we, we're not going to pay you your full salary for the first three months. 
However that works out, we're not going to give you your full schedule for commissions the first three months. You're not eligible for a bonus the first three months. Anything like that I want to know, and I want that spelled out explicitly um, in, the, in the offer. So again, good offer should have clear understanding of the role, clear understanding of how you're compensated, a depiction of the benefits that might take away some of the costs, some out of those pocket costs, and a clear understanding of any benefit costs directly to me. Uh, clear understanding of start date, clear understanding of any kind of probation periods or anything like that. All of that should be spelled out in the offer. Without that, it's really hard to make a good decision on whether or not you should take that job. Mm -hmm.